Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today we'll be looking at the arm, the muscles of the arm. We'll be looking at the muscles that can be found in the arm. But before we go over to the muscles of the arm, let's first of all understand the area or the region of the body that the arm is located. Now, the arm is the part of the upper limb that is situated between the shoulder joint here to the elbow joint. So, this part of the upper limb between the shoulder joint and the elbow is the arm. And also, if you look at the model we have here, you can see the arm from the shoulder joint here down to the elbow joint. So, we'll be looking at the muscles that can be found in this arm. So, the arm is divided into two compartments the anterior compartment and the posterior compartment. So, the anterior compartment has about three muscles there, while the posterior compartment have only one muscle there. So, the anterior compartment is this part of the arm that you can see here. That is the anterior compartment of the arm, while the posterior compartment is at the posterior part here. So, three for the anterior compartment and one for the posterior compartment. The muscles in the anterior compartment includes the coracobrachialis muscle, the biceps brachii muscle, and also the brachialis muscle. Then coming back to the coming down to the posterior compartment, the muscle there is the triceps brachii, making it four muscles in the arm. Although people consider ankle news as the muscles of the arm, but I think that the ankle news will be categorized or will be better categorized as the muscle of the forearm and not the arm. So we will be going over to see or to look at these muscles, their origin, their insertion, their innovation and what this muscle actually do in the arm. So we will be looking at them one after the other. So coming over here, I told us that I will be showing us these muscles one after the other. So the first muscle that I made mention of is the coracobrachialis muscle. This muscle here is the coracobrachialis muscle. It lies medially and it is a small muscle actually. This is the coracobrachialis muscle. And also, if you look at this aspect or this part, you also see the coracobrachialis here. It also lies medially here. So, the second muscle we have is the biceps brachii muscle. Biceps is a Latin word which means a two-headed muscles of the arm. So if you look at this muscle here on the anterior aspect, this muscle on the anterior aspect, it is the bicep brachii muscle and it has two head like I told us. This is the two head. This is the short head of the bicep brachii and this is the long head of the bicep brachii. The short head lies medially closer to the coracobrachialis muscle, while the long head lies laterally. And the both of these muscle join together at the middle or the shaft of the humerus. They join together to form a muscle mass. So you can see, you can see the muscle mass formed by these two muscle. So the third muscle we have here is the brachialis muscle. The brachialis muscle actually lie under the biceps brachii. So here now the biceps brachii is cut short, exposing the brachialis muscle. So this muscle is the brachialis muscle. It lies anteriorly but deeper under the bicep brachii. The bicep brachii actually have no attachment in the arm. Yes, it has no attachment in the arm, but you can see that the brachialis muscle attaches at the arm here. Yeah. So this is the brachialis muscle. Then finally, the last muscle we have is the triceps brachii muscle, which is the muscle of the posterior compartment of the arm. And this muscle mass, this whole muscle is known as the triceps brachii muscle. And triceps is actually a Latin word that stands for three-headed muscle of the arm. So this is the tricep brachii. The tricep brachii acts three head, like I told us. So that is it. 
Then let's go over to seeing these muscles one after the other, their origin, insertion, innovation, and action. So, like I told us, this is the coracobrachialis muscle. And the coracobrachialis muscle originates from the coracoid process of the scapula. You see where the name coraco came from. So it originates from the coracoid process of the scapula and it runs on the media aspect of the arm. It runs on the media aspect of the arm and it inserts at the anteromedia aspect of the humerus. So you can see that it inserts at the anteromedia aspect of the humerus. This is the point of insertion. But I will show us the point of origin from the scapula. This is the scapula and this is the coracoid process. So the coracobrachialis muscle originates from this coracoid process here. And it runs medially in the humerus or in the arm to insert at the anteromedial aspect of the humerus. So that is the point of insertion. This muscle is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve and also it helps to flex the arm or it helps to flex the shoulder joint and it also weakly adopts the arm. Then the second muscle is the biceps brachii. This too is the biceps brachii. So the short head of the biceps brachii, the one that is medially originates from the coracoid process of the scapula. I showed us the coracoid process of the scapula. It has the same origin with the coracobrachialis. As you can see, the both of them are coming from the same point of origin. You look at the both of them, you see they are coming from the same place. So it originates from the coracoid process of the scapula. Then it runs down medially. So the long head of the bicep brachii originates from the supragrenoid tobacco of the scapula. So this is the supragrenoid tobacco of the scapula. This is it. It originates from here, the supragrenoid tobacco of the scapula, and it runs downward in the intertubacular sulcus or the intertubacular groove of the humerus. So you can see the intertubacular groove of the humerus here. It runs through the intertubacular groove of the humerus and in the middle or in the shaft of the humerus, the both muscle mass join together to form a single muscle mass. So you can see the both of them forming a single muscle mass and you can see that they run anteriorly. Then it runs down to crossing the elbow joint to insert at the radial tuberosity. So, in, so this is the radial tuberosity. This is the radius and this protrusion here is the radial tuberosity. So this is where the biceps brachii inserts. And also, there is another important feature in this bicep brachii. You notice that the bicep brachii, after crossing the elbow, give off the bicepta aponeurosis. It give off this aponeurosis here, known as the bicepta aponeurosis. And you can see that this bicepta aponeurosis forms the roof of the cubita fossa. So this is the bicepta aponeurosis going medially. And it forms the roof of the cubita fossa. Why the rest of the bicep brachii inserts at the radial tuberosity? You can see it's going laterally here to insert at the radial tuberosity. The bicep brachii helps to flex the elbow. They help to flex the elbow and it also helps to supinate the forearm. Then the next muscle we have in the anterior arm or in the anterior compartment is this muscle here, which is the brachialis muscle. The brachialis muscle originates from the shaft of the humerus. This point is the point of origination of the brachialis muscle. So it originates on the medial and the medial and lateral shaft of the humerus and it runs downward to insert at the ulnar tuberosity. So this is the ulnar tuberosity here. This is the ulnar bone and this is the ulnar tuberosity where the brachialis muscle inserts. So the brachialis muscle helps in the 
flexion of the elbow. It helps to flex the elbow joint. That is what it does. And it is also innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. So let's go over to the posterior compartment of the forearm. You see, I showed us this muscle mass known as the triceps brachii. It has three heads the long head, the media head, and the lateral head. So the long head of the tricep brachii, it is the longest actually, and it originates from the infragrimary tubercle of the scapula. So this is the scapula and this is the infragrimary tubercle. So this is where the long head of the tricep brachii originates. So, and it runs downward. So the lateral head originates from the posterior shaft of the humerus above the radial groove. And the media head originates from the posterior shaft of the humerus below the radial groove. So the lateral, uh, the lateral and the medial head all originates from the posterior shaft of the humerus. But the lateral head originates above the radial groove here. Why the media head originates below the radial groove here. So, and together, both the lateral, the medial, and the long head join together to insert at the recranon process of the ulnar bone. To insert at the recranon process of the ulnar bone. So, this muscle is innervated by the radial nerve the three of them the three heads is innervated by the radial nerve and also this muscle helps in the extension of the elbow it helps to extend the elbow so as a matter of fact the muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve yes it innervates the three of them why the radial nerve innervates the muscles of the posterior compartment of the arm so, in a recap of what I've said so far, I told us that the arm is divided into two compartments, the anterior compartment and the posterior compartment. The anterior compartment has three muscles, the coracobrachialis muscle, the bicep brachii muscle, and the brachialis muscle, while the posterior compartment has only the triceps brachii muscle. And the muscles of the anterior compartment is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve and they also help to flex the elbow apart from the coracobrachialis that helps to flex the arm while that of the posterior compartment helps to extend the elbow so we've come to the end of this teaching i'll encourage you to subscribe to my youtube channel and follow me on facebook learn with chisum great follow me on tiktok chisum underscore great like this video share this video to your friends and comment on this video thank you very much